Hi guys, welcome to the first episode of Let's Theorise with Pies without a pie. I'm not going to change the name though, Let's Theorise with Gingerbread just sounds kind of silly. This episode is my season 4 prediction. I've got four main theories for Stranger Things, and without really meaning them to, I realised that when combined, they formed a reasonable outline for a possible final season. My previous videos have outlined my main theories, that Murray is the American, Hopper is in the Upside Down, and Brenner is the Mind Flayer. My very predictable fourth theory is that the final battle, whenever that comes, will take place in the Upside Down. So in this video, I'll talk you through how these theories could map out a season 4 arc, while making a gingerbread creation from season one. If you missed any of the earlier videos, you might want to go back and watch them to hear my logic before you watch this one. I'm also going to explore a couple of slightly different versions at the end, as I'm aware that any inclusion of the Brenner is the Mind Flayer theory takes us quite far into tinfoil land, and even though it's one of my favourite theories, I do think that there is something to be said for keeping the monsters as monsters and the best human antagonist as a human. I'm going to kick it off with the Russian plot and the implications from the post credit scene. We saw that the Russians had a captive Demogorgon. A prisoner was taken to the Demogorgon's cell and attacked. The general response to this scene was that he was eaten, and I believe that I even referred to him as Demogorgon Chow in my American video. But I don't think that that was actually what was happening. The Demogorgon has been known to eat animals, so the Russians wouldn't need to feed it humans. But the Demogorgon from Season 1 did seem to use humans as incubators for its demo slug spawn. I believe that the Russians are trying to reproduce Demogorgons, and that the prisoner was being used as a host, not just a snack. I think that in season 4 we're going to see a huge demo nest in Russia. This is one of the many reasons that I love the idea of Murray as the American. If the Russians have a sizable weapon at their disposal, in the form of a huge demo army, the only solution will be destroying it all. If Hopper is the American, he can't sacrifice himself again. It would just be sad, and repetitive, and he wouldn't be reunited with Elle. Although the alternative of Elle being in Russia as well is far worse for me. I will be so disappointed if we have any scenes of the kids saving the world from Russia. It's a show about kids in small town America. I don't want to see them fighting soldiers on Russian soil. If Brenner was the American, the Russian threat is unlikely to be taken out, and if it was, I don't know how I would feel about Brenner being the hero. But Murray could sacrifice himself without the kids ever having to step foot on Russian soil. It would be a sustainable side story because it's about a character we love. We can get a bit of exposition about how the Russians got involved in the first place. There can be a ton of aliens references and Murray gets to save America. Let's move on to the main story, which is the Upside Down. The teaser trailer heavily implies that the Upside Down will be an important location for next season. I think we'll be seeing a lot of it through Hopper's eyes, but that eventually the kids will arrive to bring him home. I hear a lot of doubt about whether or not Hopper could survive for months in the Upside Down, but I don't think it's as toxic as everyone fears it is. Will was really sick after his time there, but he spent the best part of a week living in a shack during winter, not eating or drinking, and he incubated a demo slug. There were a lot of factors that went into his illness. It may not just be innately toxic in the Upside Down, just because the lab said it was. Hopper already knows about the spore shooters and to cover his mouth whenever they're around, and I think that the majority of the local Demogorgon population was destroyed in Season 2. The biggest understandable fear is his access to food and water, but there are trees everywhere, so there has to be water somewhere. And Hopper has military training, so it's likely that he'll know how to hunt and forage for food. I think that we'll have an episode that shows Hopper's time in the Upside Down, and that it's going to echo Elle's episode from Season 2. We'll see him hunting to survive and eventually holding up in his cabin having to stay there all alone. Even though Elle's captivity was entirely necessary for her survival, I think Hop was guilty of forgetting how hard it was for her sometimes. And this period of solitude and fear will help him to understand what she went through. I think it could also help him bond with Will as a future stepfather, as they would have both lived through a really similar experience. The other big danger is the Mind Flayer, but I think that he will be pretty much MIA after the gate closed. There's a chance that he could go after Hopper and turn him, but the evil Hopper theory depresses me and it just seems way too reminiscent of the last two seasons, so I'm not going to dwell on it. I think that the Mind Flayer won't reappear until the gate reopens. My assumption is that when visiting for Christmas, Mike and Elle go to the cabin, they enter her room and absentmindedly close the door behind them, the door opens three inches and Elle realises that Hop is alive and communicating to her from the upside down. She regains her powers and decides to reopen the gate and bring him back. Elle and the gang enter the Upside Down and hijinks ensue. 
there's a chance that we don't discover that Hopper has survived and is in the Upside Down until the last episode of Season 4, which would leave the journey to the dark side for Season 5, but that doesn't really leave us with a terribly packed plot in Season 4 once you exclude Hopper and the Upside Down. Whether Brenner is the Mind Flayer or not, the scenario plays out essentially the same in my mind. The kids find Hopper, they encounter the Mind Flayer, they destroy the Mind Flayer, they go home, end of show. The added benefit of Brenner being the Mind Flayer, though, is that Elle and Hopper both get to confront him. If Brenner isn't the Mind Flayer, he could be working with the Russians and be in on Murray's interrogations, which would tie up his story, but I think it would be a great shame not to have him come head-to-head -head with Elle or Hopper. Which is why I like my theory, where Bald Eagle becomes an American hero and disposes of the Russian threat, Hopper gets saved by Elle, Mike and the gang, and Brenner gets what's coming to him after the most epic battle ever seen in the Upside Down. There are other possible routes to a battle of the puppers, which includes Hopper being the American and Brenner being in charge of the Russian project. And this does make a lot of sense in some ways, but my issue with it is that it doesn't tie them back into the main plot in a way that also eradicates the Russian threat. I can see them trying to use Hopper as bait to catch Elle if they want to create another gate, so they could integrate the story that way. But either that ends up with Elle in Russia, blech, or it ends up with Hopper and Brenner in the States trying to catch Elle and doesn't deal with the Russian demogorgon problem. Even if they only have the one, it's still a problem, and I suspect they're well on their way to having more than that. The plot also doesn't really lead to any monster fighting for the kids. I mean, I suppose they could introduce some other numbered kids to fight, but after battling a building-sized goo monster, that would seem pretty tame. This version of the plot also doesn't have any upside down at all. I know that there's a possibility that the show will go on for five seasons, which would probably mean that they want to save the big upside down battle for then, but I can't see a single logical reason that Elle would intentionally reopen the gate in Hawkins unless it was to save Hopper. Unless another one of the numbered kids does it, or Elle does it by accident, which would also be repetitive, I really feel like the only reasonable excuse is to save someone she loves. Even though there are a lot of flaws in the theory, it's still my second pick, because Brenner working with the Russians answers many questions, and Hopper was set up pretty well to be the American. I think it's the more obvious choice for what would happen in Season 4, but I'm still hopeful that they pick a less predictable path. So, what do you think? I tried not to veer too far into fanfic territory and just keep it to the theories, but I can see so many ways that these scenarios could play out. I could honestly talk about what might happen in the next season for hours, so if you want to discuss possibilities for Season 4, feel free to start a conversation with me in the comments. Uh, this is the last of my current theories about next season, but I've spent many hours mulling over all the combinations of theories to see which seem like viable options when put together and which seem like dead ends. So I'd like to cover some of the more popular theories out there. If you'd like to hear my take on any particular theory, just let me know and I'll happily get baking and give my opinion. Oh, just a little afterthought. Um, I was watching the new Rockstars video about Stranger Things Easter eggs from season three and thought that his opinion on the recurrence of the jack-o'-lantern bucket was really sweet and well thought out. In season two, Bob Newby grabs jack-o'-lantern as he enters the store that Joyce works in before whisking her off into the back room to kiss, and a jack-o'-lantern can be seen on the discount shelf in the store in season three, in a scene between Hopper and Joyce. New rock stars posited that it was there as a reminder that Bob's present is still getting in the way of Hopper and Joyce's relationship. But when making this project, I discovered that the jack-o'-lantern can be seen in the buyer's living room in season one as well. So now I'm wondering if it's actually there as a reference to something else, perhaps an 80s horror movie or just yet another E.T. nod. If anyone has any ideas, let me know because I'm really interested. Bye!